Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. On today's video, I'm smoking up a 20 pound Wagyu brisket from Midland Meat Company on my Yoder flat top. Stay tuned. As you can see, look at this bark. It's crazy. Oh man, this is perfect. It helps to start with a nice sharp knife, okay? Oh my goodness. Look at that. All right, so what I've got here is a 20 pound brisket. Now this was a 22 pound brisket and I trimmed up a little bit of the, the uh, brisket, some of the fat, trimmed the edges off. In fact, I'm gonna leave a video up here, a link to a video that I did on trimming this brisket so you guys can see that. So I am cooking this on my Yoder flat top. Now in the past, what I've done is I've put the meat on the far left side on the top and I put the charcoal on the far right side and the briskets have, have come out delicious but I haven't gotten much of a smoke ring and I'm thinking that the reason for that was that the smoke, because the exhaust on the flat top is in the middle, that the smoke from the charcoal and the wood was coming up over the top and out the exhaust and really never got a chance to hit the, the meat. Um, so what I'm gonna do today is I'm using some Fogo charcoal, their premium charcoal. I'm gonna put two spots of charcoal, one on the far left and one on the far right. And I'm, I'm gonna put my brisket right in the middle right below the exhaust stack. So that forces the smoke to go over the brisket. So hopefully this works. Either way, if it doesn't work, we're gonna have an amazing tasting brisket. So let me start with the rubs. I'm gonna use a garlic jalapeno seasonal and some of the beef rub. I'm not gonna bore you guys to death on this, on this portion of it, but just add a good layer of the garlic jalapeno, real simple. Okay, and this will be cooking fat cap down just like that, because again, the, the, the majority of the heat is gonna be coming from the bottom of that Yoda flat top. And a good layer of the beef rub, I mean good layer. Just nice, heavy layer, just like you see here. I'm not using any binders whatsoever. Again, you wanna push down on the rub, just like that. All right, so I'm gonna finish seasoning this brisket. And I'm gonna show you the setup on my Yoder flat top, so stay tuned. All right, we're outside of my Yoder flat top and the charcoal that I am using today is a super premium lump charcoal from Fogo. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. Look at these big chunks that I have in here. I mean, this is a small chunk actually. There's some really big chunks in here. So what I did, as I mentioned earlier, is I've got two spots of charcoal and I am using these um, Fogo starters. If you guys haven't used these, these are amazing. They light up pretty quick. Let me go ahead and light them up. They light up really quick. Okay, that's going already. And I'm gonna light this one as well. There we go. So that's gonna get going. You can see the two stacks. Let me move this bag here. All right. So hopefully you guys can see the, actually let me zoom you in here a little bit. There we go. You can see the stack there and I have a stack on the left side as well. And as I mentioned, the exhaust on the Yoder flat top is right in the middle. So I'm gonna be putting my briskets on right in the middle of these grates right here. And again, the smoke is gonna be forced to come from the left and the right side of it and then go out the exhaust stack and hopefully if my theory is correct I will end up with a nice smoke ring so I'm gonna let this catch and uh, get ashed over and I'll bring you guys back so stay tuned all right so it's been 20 minutes since I lit the fogo charcoal now I did drop two small very small splits of uh, post oak wood on top of the fogo charcoal just to give me some extra smoke and uh, this is where we're at right now. This is a brisket again. This is probably a 20 pound brisket. Uh, I trimmed about two, maybe three pounds off of it last night. The point is gonna be closer to the stack, the exhaust stack anyhow, and the flat is pointing towards the front of the smoker itself. So I've got my inkbird thermometer in there. I've got one probe in the thickest part of the flat and one probe in the back just to measure my, my grate temperature. The intakes, I've got them halfway open. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the lid. And well, actually before I close it, 
<clears throat> you can see my theory behind cooking this way. So the smoke is coming up this way. You can clearly see it there. And it is over here on the left side as well. So it's coming up. So hopefully the smoke comes over the brisket from the bottom of it as well and out the exhaust. Therefore, therefore producing a nice smoke ring. Either way, if I don't get a smoke ring, uh, again, a uh, smoke ring is not an indication of bad barbecue, but I think everybody likes to chase that smoke ring, if you will, and I haven't been able to get a decent smoke ring. I get a small smoke ring on the flat top, so hopefully uh, this, this cooking style will produce a nice smoke ring. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut the lid down. that the exhaust I'm gonna leave it 100% open again my intakes are halfway opened and I'm gonna try to shoot for 275 uh, the pit temperature and at that point I'll start to shut down my intakes and maybe my exhaust to maintain that temperature so we'll see you guys back uh, I, actually I will be spritzing with apple cider vinegar and water but not until I get that bark uh, nice and set or my rubs are set and uh, so that's probably gonna be maybe two hours. I'll bring you guys back at that point, so stay tuned. All right, so we're at the two hour mark now, and let's take a look at our brisket. And just an FYI, if you guys were wondering, after two hours, the pit temperature is still at 282. I've got the intake on both sides cracked about a quarter of an inch open, and the exhaust as well. You can see that there, about a quarter of an inch open on the top. So still maintaining that temperature, brisket temperature is 106. And we started at 35 degrees. Uh, that's what the brisket internal temperature was. So let's take a look here. Uh, number one, I still have lots of Fogo charcoal. Um, some of it's still black, it's not even ashed over, so that's perfect. I still have some, some of the post oak uh, chunks that I put in there still active by opening the lid uh, This is gonna build a little bit more heat. Let's check the bark. Oh Yeah, look at that So the bark is set Again, that's only two hours and I'm loving the color Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and spritz it with apple cider vinegar and water Just give it a little bit of a spritz here. And again, by spritzing constantly or frequently, I should say, you're gonna get a little bit more smoke flavor um, on, your, on your brisket. Because smoke does stick to wet surfaces. So, just like that. Perfect. So, I'm gonna go ahead and shut the lid down so I don't lose a whole lot of heat. And again, you can see that that fire is still still going good. It's not a fire raging fire, but the uh, Fogo charcoal, uh, because of the big big chunks, um, still have another I don't know maybe two three hours worth of life in them. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this uh, shut the door down. One thing to remember when you open the lid, the exhaust will swing open. So just come back and close that down. So we'll check back in in uh, two hours, so stay tuned. All right, so we're five hours into the cook now, and let's take a look at this brisket. I did spritz every hour or so, and again, the uh, pit has been maintaining temperature. Right now, I just opened the door, so I'm at 268, and the internal temperature of the brisket is 165. So the color is almost there. I'm gonna let the surface dry up a little bit more. So you just spray the sides over here. One thing I did notice is that it's cooking really fast and I expected that um, because I am running two piles of charcoal, if you will. So it's cooking twice as fast as a brisket normally would because of the heat itself. Um, but the, the temperature has been maintaining uh, between 275 and 300. And that's what we look like right there. Let me get you a little bit better shot there. There we go. Nope. There we go. So it's coming along nicely. Uh, the color's good. I'm just going to let the surface dry up here a little bit more. 
if I wrap that, uh, the rub's going to come off of that section. So I'm going to shut the door down, give it another 30 minutes, probably at the five and a half hour mark. And uh, we'll come back and wrap it. So stay tuned. All right, so we're at the five and a half hour mark and the brisket has the color I want. So it's time to wrap it. So I'm just going to spritz it with apple cider vinegar and water. Just get the surface nice and mo uh, wet here or moist. Just like that. I'm not going to put any sauces or anything in there. At this point, just do a simple wrap, fold it over. Just like that, pull the edges in. Nice and tight. And fold it over one more time. just like that so really nice and tight now this time when I put it back inside the Yoder flat top I'm gonna to put the point facing out instead of in um, I noticed that the right side for some reason it, I may have put a little bit more charcoal it is running a little bit hotter that way the left side cooks a little bit more now so I'm gonna put it back in the smoker internal temperature was 167 so we're almost there we may be stalling out for a little bit so I'm gonna pop it back in the smoker put a probe back in it and we'll see you guys in a bit, so stay tuned. All right, so the brisket is ready, and the total cook time was nine hours, and it has been resting for about an hour and a half, but it's still plenty hot. Number one, I gotta tell you that this brisket is still extremely uh, jiggly, if you guys can see that. I mean, it's, it's tender, extremely tender. So I've got my knife out, and my slicing knife, and I got my electric knife out as well. Now, one thing that I do wanna say before I slice into this, is that this brisket was probing extremely tender at 195 degrees. I normally take briskets up to about 200 or so and start probing at that point, but this one was extremely tender at 195, so I pulled it, and again, it's been resting for about uh, an hour and a half now. Um, the bark is absolutely beautiful. Um, it, the, the rub is not mushy at all. Um, I mean, just a really happy with this brisket. Um, I know a lot of people will say, well, man, why didn't you cook this on your offset or whatever? Well, because that, that Yoder flat top really produces a really good tasting brisket. So that is a reason. So let's see if we got a smoke ring. If not, I got to tell you, this brisket's going to be good either way. Uh, smoke ring is not an indication of a good brisket, obviously, but I've been chasing the smoke ring on the Yoder flat top. And I think that if my theory is correct, putting charcoal on the right and the left side and putting the the protein or the brisket in this case in the middle hopefully it'll generate a smoke ring so let's check it out and uh, see what we got i'm just going to cut the uh right here right around here oh yeah we have a smoke ring beautiful 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 it's still plenty hot, okay? But look at this. Hopefully you guys can make, make that out on the camera. It's extremely juicy, extremely tender. So I'm gonna cut the, uh, the point in half. Boy, do we have a smoke ring. Beautiful. Look at that. It's juicy. I mean, that's what you want a brisket to look like right there. Hopefully you guys can make that out on the camera. But uh, really happy with this brisket, I got to tell you. So there we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see how it slices with my knife here. This knife is, is a little dull, and I know it's a special blade. I don't want to sharpen it with just anything. So I want to take a couple of slices. Let's start right here. Let's see how it slices. Actually, you guys couldn't tell it was dull. It sliced right through this thing. Okay. Let's get a slice here. And do the famous hang test. Let's see what, let's see what we look like here. 
Oh man, it's it's like extremely tender. Look at that, guys. Okay, really happy with it. The smoke ring is absolutely pronounced. You guys can see that on this slice here. Let's give it a taste. Oh man, here we go. Take some of that fat off of there. Mmm. Delicious. Man, it's got a good, um, a good backyard brisket taste to it. Look at that smoke ring. Absolutely delicious. Let me give some of this to my, my daughter. Give that a shot, baby. The rubs, guys, again, just the garlic jalapeno seasonal and the beef rub from Victory Lane Barbecue. Tender, tender, tender. What do you think, baby? Guys, that, um, excuse me. That's so how I did it. My project was complete. I've been chasing the smoke ring on the Yoder flat top, and I finally did it. So those of you guys that have a Yoder flat top and you're not getting a smoke ring, before I was putting my, <clears throat> excuse me, I was putting my meats on the far left side, whether it's ribs, pork ribs, or beef ribs, or briskets, and putting my fire on the right side, but my theory was correct, that the smoke was going out, uh, out the stack in the middle, so the smoke was never really going over the food. The heat was, was there, so it was like cooking a, a protein in the, in the oven, really, um, because I wasn't getting any smoke ring, <clears throat> but now, I built a, a small pile of charcoal on the left, which by the way, that Fogo charcoal, I didn't have to add anything for nine hours, nothing. The only thing I did was shook the, uh, the charcoal a little bit, the charcoal basket, just to get the, the ash off and it ignited again. So for nine hours, now those were pretty big chunks, okay? Um, and I used about three quarters of the bag and I think that bag is a 17 pound bag so it lasted nine hours. It's still hot out there. Um, so again, putting the charcoal on the left side and putting some charcoal on the right side and putting your proteins in the middle, this is what you're gonna get. So uh, I've been chasing it. I finally got it. This is a, a really good tasting brisket. I gotta tell you that if, if somebody was to, to give me a slice of this and they told me that they cooked it on the charcoal grill, I'd call BS <laughs> because it's so good. And the bark is good. The flavor is absolutely amazing. Um, you do have that backyard, again, backyard brisket flavor. Absolutely pleased with this brisket, guys. Midland Meat Company, you guys are making a, a savage brisket. Keep doing what you're doing. This is absolutely delicious. Guys, I want to thank you guys for watching. If this is your first time here and you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Ask me any questions, guys. Honestly, any questions with this cook, any help that uh, you guys may need, that's what I'm here for. Until next time, Joe is smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. See ya.